what's going on? This is the second installment of the series, Thinking. Um, in case you're new, welcome, number one. Secondly, though, um, this, this series of things, I guess, would just be a, a way for me to vocally think. Um, because it's very important. I, I find it very important for people to actually learn how to think critically think for themselves and I think that's a very big part of advancing forward with problems that we face in society at large and I think it's very important that we focus on the individual and one thing the individual I think needs to focus on currently is to think for themselves so I wanted to do so in with myself and all being in doing so with things that come up in uh, political areas or cultural issues and talking points and buzzwords and whatever you want to call them. Um, one thing I did want to talk about today, though, was the the concept that we as society, uh, what we praise is what we get more of. Generally, that's pretty much the case, um, cut and dry. Um, and it doesn't take really anyone with uh, a lot of knowledge to logically follow that that out um, what you praise is what you get more of you see it with parenting uh, positive reinforcement on things that the parent or the, the child does well um, the child will do more of that um, same thing culturally and societally um, what we as a culture encourage uh, is what we will see more of or I should say what we praise is what we will see more of um and especially in a time now, it's 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 hard to see that praise being seen from anywhere. It seems like a lot of times all we're seeing is um, a shouting back and forth. Um, and that's coming from me, someone who <laughs> generally likes to partake in those those shouting matches, if you will. Um, but when I had I had some questions when thinking of that statement. Um, what we as society praise, we see more of. Um, and I wanted, and I was just thinking, um, what are instances or things that I think society praises? Right? What are these things that I think that society praises? Um, and while just trying to think of uh, positive viral stories that I hear, um, uh, I came up with a couple ideas. Um, quickly, acts, random acts of kindness always seem to get really big. Um, justice against racist, racism or bigotry, um, those usually get really big. Um, and then children showing non-discriminatory things. That kind of falls into the previous one, though. But I, I do think that justice against racism or bigotry is the probably one of the biggest things praised. Um, and it's not necessarily talking about... Um, law justice or just social justice. It's more so combinations of all of it together. Um, but that has implications as well. Um, the uh, It seems to me that the biggest um, thing that society praises, of course, is that that justice against racism, uh, racism, against racism or bigotry. Um, but it seems to be in more specifically um, in what I think seems to be the society praises is the individual who stands up um, against hatred um, and for me at least growing up since 95 or say being born in 95 growing up since then it seems like a lot of the popular stories or mythology um, or whatever you want to call it the narratives that um, we partake in either by movie watching or listening to music or whatever it is we do um, they seem to follow this same pattern of the person who steps out um, from the stands out from the, the the masses makes themselves visible obviously uh, uh, different from the crowd steps out against the um, the power that is hold that oppressing them, holding them down essentially, and wants to um, stand out in um, either that that first person, and no one else is there at first, and they step out, making a lot of 
big noise. Hey, I'm here and I'm here to do this and that. And um, generally after they do so, everyone um, turns on the, the power and all follows behind the individual that is standing up against the oppressor. Um, and that that story, that narrative in and of itself is not inherently bad, right? Um, standing up against evil and such is not a bad thing inherently. Um, but I do think um, the way it's been interpreted and talked about, especially in the millennial slash iGen time frame, that, that late 80s and early 2000s time frame, um, it's had some negative characteristics uh, effectively. Um, namely, um, that if I just... If I'm just loud enough and make enough noise um, that all those who agree with the assertion that I'm making uh, or I should say making the correct assertion, um, correct meaning what I believe to be correct and know to be correct, um, that all those who agree with my correct assertion without... Um, regard to the possibility that I am wrong um, that all those will stand behind me and we will move as one big force to take out the um, the power that is holding uh, us down to begin with and so interesting but I also wanted to focus on the the inverse of the statement the state the inverse of what society praises we'll see more of um, and the the opposite of that would be what society openly despises creates less. Um, and for some reason, when I said that out loud, um, when I was first writing it down, I was like, does it actually create less? Because it seems like to me when um, society openly um, expresses negative pressure on either an individual or an idea that idea seems to get stronger and that's only sometimes I wouldn't say that's always but that's sometimes and instances I'm thinking of is like instances of Alex Jones right um, where society took a step in the direction of saying no you are not allowed to speak anywhere um, and what I've seen from a lot of a lot of thinkers quote unquote and other individuals is that that was a that was in the wrong direction because now that he's not able to publicly talk he's forced to go underground and then the idea is that they are talking about amongst themselves in the echo chamber that they're creating now that they're now not even close to being open in the public um, we don't know what they're talking about and you can see when I get nervous I start going like this a lot I just now notice that I don't like that at all um, aside from that um, the thing about society uh, is that they're having to always find evil people to point out and make an example of, uh, so that the individual uh, it helps guide, so that the individual is helped in guidance uh, of finding that comfortable zone. Um, I wouldn't say, uh, or I should say that I think the individual, the average individual, wants to find a comfort spot. Not too often will be someone that always wants to be in the uncomfortable spot. And I think that's definitely something that people can work on to learn how to be uncomfortable. But I think uh, instinctively we look for a comfort so spot to be in. Um, and uh, the question that brought up to me was um, what I was kind of mentioning before was aren't we facing a issue of growing extremist groups everywhere and that's a th that the things that they're being shunned are growing like what I mentioned with Alex Jones um, I don't think so I really don't um, as long as things are able to stay out in the open and freely talked about 
um, people with bad ideas will be confronted with the marketplace of ideas, the free market of ideas, essentially. It's like, no, that's dub. Hmm, excuse me. No, that's a dumb idea. Um, we're not going to go with that. Here's why. Um, and I think since we've had this um, open platform, especially like on with social media now, able to reach so many more people, um, we've um, attached ourselves to these... Um, attach ourselves and other people to these ideas that they express. So, um, like, for instance, if I have a friend who's shouting out, communism is the way to go, right? Um, and I tell this individual, I say, no, communism is bad. Um, for some reason, and maybe, maybe, maybe not be smart enough to understand this yet, but um, that may be because in order to fight an idea, we seem we we feel like we need to have a face to fight, so that could be that reason the reasoning for that. Um, so we attach that idea to that idea to this person, and um, when we're trying to dismantle the idea, it gets more so like I'm dismantling this person, and it, you can feel that when you're on the receiving end, and so you want to do that on the other end as well okay hmm. excuse me reciprocate that um, so but at the same time because when that gets done unjustly when people get um, discredited unjustly uh, for incorrect assumptions or uh, non-understanding of the ideas that are being presented um, the people who are making the accusations against someone are losing a lot of credibility and we're seeing that a lot so today I mean it's very especially very recently with the whole kid in the high school with that Native American guy um, and how the stories that first initially came out for that were completely in one direction of the story whereas when more information came out, it was more so of a complete, complete flip, and that oh, it was actually this complete opposite um, example that had ex nothing to do with what was originally reported, and so I mean, there it seems like the credibility is slowly being lost. Um, and I think that would be because most people that you meet, uh, the vast majority of people, um, at least in a political sense, lie, if you look at it in a spectrum, who look at it in a spectrum, my arm's really sore, uh, then they have the right and the left, right? And I'd say most people are close to the, close to the middle. Um, they are left or right leaning, um, but they're fairly closer to the center rather than the extreme ends of either of either direction um so but it seems like the the louder the louder groups seem to be the ones that are on those extreme ends they're the ones that are very vocal and loud um that they're, they're the ones that get heard the most um so maybe that's why um, ideas are getting spread pretty quickly and like that. But uh, kind of reminds me of the the kind of the the free marketplace of ideas on things like YouTube, um, arguably the free speech market. Um, and because I mean, people are making ideas and stuff on YouTube, um, the marketplace. Um, will or the culture of YouTube will um, explain to those that make um, public statements on the site that are 
generally considered wrong by the culture of people on YouTube, though make a point to to point that out. So it's very interesting. Um, and when people get it wrong, it's usually usually a mess whichever way you go with it. Um, and I mean, we could go on. I think I need to stop it here, but I did want to talk about the voices of culture real quick. Um, and I don't know if I have, I, I should probably should preface this whole video with, I'm not entirely sure of everything I'm talking about. That's why it's called thinking. I'm thinking out loud, thinking of ideas, um, and trying to understand them more so myself. Um, and with the whole discussion of YouTube and how the marketplace adjusts, there's the idea of who are the voices of culture to begin with. Um, and I kind of mentioned that earlier. It's those people who are on the extreme, the outer ends of the political spectrum, or if you want to call it that. And usually those with the most social currency. Uh, social currency was, I, I don't know if that's an actual coin term. I kind of had it with social currency is that who has like the most weight in social situations. Um, so like someone who's very, very popular, um, someone who's very captivating, um, they have more social currency, as in they're able to, in social settings, take control. Um, so, usually those people are able to use that social currency to Getting a phone call, so we're gonna call it a night there. <laughs> Good night, everybody.